So for example, we picked up a Freightliner here. It's obviously a crane and it's about a 40 ton crane. So this thing is looking out the mirror. It's good and long and it's got my tow car. You can see my tow car in the back there hooked to it. So I have to figure out what the length of this vehicle is total. <clears throat> and uh, how many axles it has. This particular one has two rear driving axles. Some of them have up to seven to ten axles. When you get in the truck and you get going down the road, what you want to do <clears throat> almost immediately is take that truck to about 35 to 45 miles an hour and then aggressively step on the brakes. To see if that truck pulls to the left or the right or whether it even stops because some of these vehicles are not designed well to stop in a hurry or stop hardly at all. You almost have to downshift to get the daggum things to stop but you need to know this before you take that out of the highway and some car pulls in front of you and slams the brakes on which is going to happen. Trust me. So. You'll get going down the road, 35 to 40, aggressively step on the brakes and just lightly take your hand off the wheel to see which way it's going to travel or whether it's going to break in a straight line or even the distance it's going to stop in because you need to know this right away. So you're going down the road and we're going to use this parking space to be your highway. You want to be in the center of that lane. Now this sounds like, you know, big deal how, how simple can you get but listen to this if you index your truck properly you're going to be driving these daggum things at night where you can't see the back end of your truck you don't know where this thing is in the lane so you're going to get yourself by the mirror so you can see that mirror over there and you can see that I'm just about in the center of this lane there's the right hand mirror we'll come around here to the left hand mirror and see the line right there I might be a hair off, but let's let's per, let's uh, pretend I'm de in dead center of the lane. At that point that I'm in the center of the lane traveling down the road, I would look over here and I would index this truck. Now, if you look right here where that center line is coming at you, where it hits this post right here, that's where you're going to be in the center of the lane all the time. Now, you'll move the truck over till you get this mirror right here just over the line and that line will move from here to about right there. That's going to be your maximum place that you can go towards that line or another object without hitting it. You have to know that because you're going to have somebody pull off to the side of the road in the middle of your lane and you have to crowd over. You have to know where your limits are. So, just for talking sake, here's your center line, here's your limit about here to where you can pull over to the left. Also to the right, you'll squeeze that truck until it's riding right almost exactly on the line, minus about four inches for the mirror, of course. And that's going to be your line. That's going to be where your point is. And that line out on the road is going to probably be, this is the line in the center. So it's probably going to be right over in here somewhere is your maximum. You can go over to the right without slamming into something. Now, I'm going to be telling you later on off tracking and turning of RVs and buses. But for now, I'm sitting in a crane. So I'm going to talk about the off tracking on a crane. So... Let's look at our rear axles and you can see that on this truck there's two rear axles. You have to know immediately when you get to moving that truck or vehicle where your pivot point is in the rear. And that pivot point is the point you always keep in your mind. The pivot point here is right there between those two. I don't know where I am here. Is right there between those two axles. That's your pivot point. So, if anything's moving against you or you have to go by it, in front of that pivot point, if you turn, you're going to turn into that vehicle or building or post or ditch. 
you will turn into it because it this side the front side of your pivot point you're going to get closer to the, the object if you turn away from it of course you're going to get further away but if you're close to the object the back of your pivot point is going to come closer so if you're up against a building and you take a sharp right you're going to knock that car or building out with the ass end of your truck so you have to know the length of your truck past your pivot point now the vehicle behind you that's a whole different story because it's already following you just like a uh, like a worm behind you so as you turn you have to keep track of where the center of that ball is that you're hooked to what that's going to do so as you turn to the right the car is going to go to the left as you turn to the left the car is going to go to the right so as you're turning that vehicle your off tracking is the distance that you have to be or the distance that that vehicle is going to run to the left or the right when you start turning and that's the distance that your pivot point will move from going straight to where you're going to be in the middle or the apex of your turn once you're past that pivot point in the rear you can keep turning to the left to avoid it because the truck's going to move away from it and so is the tow vehicle but before you get to that pivot point and you have to know it you're going to get closer to those vehicles and the same goes on the right hand side if you're turning to the right you gotta be you gotta be aware of your pivot point a good driver when he turns a corner is going to picture that pivot point coming out right in the dead center of the lane to the left or the right depending on which way you're turning so if you're making a left hand turn up here to where that truck is you would plan to pull out into the intersection and start making your turn so that's your pivot point the center of that pivot point in your tires the truck comes out the pivot point in the center of the lane you're going into on that turn and it takes some practice but the better you get at it the more you will know now I realize that you're thinking well the lanes aren't very wide and the trucks are very wide you don't have a lot of room to play with but if you are a line hugger which they they call one of them they call a line hugger which on the left hand side if you're hugging that line <clears throat> and somebody jumps out of the right hand side off the median into your lane for whatever reason you've got nowhere to go but either off the road or into that next car or lane beside you if you're on the right hand side which they they say you're afraid of the wall and you're hugging that line anything happens on the left side and your truck is off the road and you have then you have a control problem if there's a berm or an edge on the pavement of any reason you're usually off in the gravel or something you're in double trouble because now you're trying to avoid something on the left if you're dead center in the lane then you know that you at least have a little bit of room to play with left and right should anything happen and while I've got you here when you're going down the road you always always keep in mind to a, to plan an escape route so if there's trucks all the way to your left cars all the way to your right and you're being squeezed down through there at 70 miles an hour start looking for an escape route and if there is not an escape route for you to get out of trouble say the truck blows a tire and swerves into your lane or the car hits a deer and swerves in front of you and I'm talking from experience they swerve slam in front of you if there is not a safety bumper between the two of you or an escape route it's time for you to get the heck out of there and build yourself an escape route find your honey hole which is somewhere you can safely follow a vehicle doing the same speed you want to do and there's not somebody tailgating you because things happen out here the minute you think you've got control that's the time that everything breaks loose and you are learning to pray